Welcome to the Digital Amateur Television Experiment is Night. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby that has many different aspects. Digital television is just one of the many modes and areas that are covered. Maybe you're interested in becoming involved in the DATV Experiment as Night. Do you realise that you do not have to be a radio amateur or need any ATV equipment to participate anywhere in the world? Also participate in the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the Heritage listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. Okay, this is uh, VK7 uh, OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV experiment as night. And uh, welcome to uh, to everyone for our, uh, uh, what is it, our 33rd show, so 33 for uh, 2021, so doing really well. Um, you can uh, please, please, please call, uh, if you're watching via streaming, uh, call in on the streaming channel. Um, I'll be watching the uh, the chat and hopefully picking up things that are, are coming in. So questions or uh, if you are on the chat, please let us know uh, you're there and uh, where you're coming in from. Uh, fantastic. Always good to know uh, know uh, know that. Tonight we've got a bit of a um, a bit of a practical show, a bit of a demonstration show. Um, you may hear some bits and pieces going on right at the moment, which is. Um, uh, going on next door, we've got uh, our big open day on uh, on the 16th on this Saturday. So uh, if you have got, uh, if you want to know all about amateur radio, please, please, please come along to the uh, the open day up here on the Queen's Domain. We've got a whole heap of activities going on, uh, including Jota. It's Jamboree on the air, which means hopefully there's some scouts uh, up here operating radios and bits and pieces. But uh, there are a whole bucket load of other. Uh, other things going on as well and we're preparing the uh, the club station which is looking uh, pretty smick right at the moment um, with a whole lot of new desks and operating positions and all sorts of stuff so uh, if you hear noise in the background that's uh, probably what it's from now um, oh and good evening uh, Murray uh, great uh, great that you're uh, on the stream so uh, I hope you're uh, hope you're doing okay um, now what I'm going to start off with is a couple of um, uh, a couple of parts. Uh, this is the first of I think two or three parts, all about resonance. Um, and the reason I chose resonance was um, we have a uh, an antenna. Um, actually, a couple of <laughs> got a couple of antennas at home. Um, but these particular antennas happen to be uh, I mounted them on a vent pipe on a plumbing vent pipe and this is a um, galvanized iron pipe uh, that comes out through the through the um, through the roof and has a bit of a vent on the top of it but I, I mounted initially the television antenna on it the tele uh, TV antenna on it and then I, I wanted another antenna a discone antenna uh, further away from all of my other antennas and so I 
extended the pole and put this disc cone, um, this VHF and above uh, disc cone antenna on the top. I very quickly realized that um, I needed to do uh, some interesting things to the disc cone to get it to stop resonating. <laughs> Now, this is not a radio frequency resonating. This is actually a audible resonating. As in, uh, we get a fair degree of wind off the mountain in the westerly, uh, from the westerly direction, uh, the roaring 40s, that make their way over the mountain. If there's snow on the mountain, it cools that wind down. So there's a bit of a chill factor, but that's not what cr creates the resonance. But um, this wind blows through, uh, and it can be a pretty fierce wind actually, um, but it blows through this disc cone and because of the mounting arrangement and the, the disc cone with its elements, its ground plane elements which are uh, are at the, the sort of the 45 degrees in a 360 direction and then there is a, a vertical element to it. Um, as the wind blows through this disc cone and it's it's coupled uh, via uh, via some hose clamps uh, at the top and the, and to the uh, pipe at the bottom, you end up getting this sort of effect. And I hope you can hear this because I took a, re a recording of it. Now that particular effect. Um, I'm fascinated by, but the rest of the family aren't as fascinated as I am. Um, <laughs> so, and, and the thing about it is, it has to be, the wind just has to be just the right speed, from just the right direction, but I reckon probably five or six times a year, there is uh, this particular, um, this particular sound, um, uh, comes from down the, the vent pipe because <laughs> that that pipe comes into uh, the inside of the house uh, and um, is a vent pipe for the uh, some of the bathroom sinks um, and uh, so it, it, it physically comes into the house and this um, this um, this noise uh, then permeates the house and of course if it's, it happens to be in the middle of the night uh, there, there is some uh, some dismay about it waking people up and all sorts of things. Anyway, so that got me thinking, um, and uh, uh, thinking a little bit about resonance. Um, and what we're going to talk about tonight is a little bit about um, physical resonance. So the resonance of structures, the resonance of of um, uh, 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 systems and structures. And next week we're going to then move to uh, what resonance is in the RF uh, RF area, uh, because resonance in the RF area is a very very special uh, condition that uh, us as amateur radio uh, operators really rely on. So let's start. Um, you've heard the recording. So what is resonance? And I'll, I'll read out the the definition of it. Describes the phenomenon of increased amplitude that occurs when the frequency of a periodically applied force, and in the case of the, um, the antenna resonating, the wind is the force, um, applied is equal or close to the natural frequency of the system. So the natural frequency of the system is around about, it's probably 800 to 1000 hertz um, that in that recording. Um, and it just so happens there's enough energy from the wind to get this antenna all resonating at, a, at an audible frequency, which then comes down the vent pipe into the, uh, into the house and you actually hear it as, a, as an audible frequency. So it, it's, it's the natural frequency of the system. So when an oscillating force is applied at a resonant frequency of a dynamic system, the system will oscillate at a higher amplitude, so you actually hear it, um, uh, than when a, the same force is applied to a, at another non-resonant frequency. So it has to be, all the conditions have to be just right for it to actually do this. So the natural, the natural what's a natural frequency? So it's the frequency at which a system tends to oscillate in the absence of any driving or dampening force. So, 
So um, there's a whole lot of uh, examples of, uh, of this. And I, I started to do a little bit of research. Um, and th there's a very famous um, Mythbusters episode um, that people may remember about the soldiers uh, marching across a bridge. And when I did, um, when I did a little bit of, um, of research on this, I'll just bring up, um, uh, where are we? I'll just bring up the, the bridge that started all of this, and this is, this is Wikipedia, is the Broughton Suspension Bridge. And this is, this is in 1883. Um, and, um, that's the, that picture was taken in 1883. It was built in 1826 to span the River Irwell between Broughton and Pendleton, um, in, now in Greater Manchester. So it's one of Europe's first suspension bridges. Now, the interesting thing was in 1831, the bridge collapsed and it was reportedly due to the mag mechanical resonance induced by the troops marching all in step across the bridge. Now, if you come across other bridges um, around the place, they have signs on them, <laughs> historic bridges and historic suspension bridges. We're only talking uh, here about suspension bridges. So this is where the deck is actually suspended uh, above the river by a whole lot of, of cables uh, that are connected to the bridge and, and keep the, the bridge up. Um, and this is the bridge that collapsed in 1831 that then caused there to be signs on all of the other bridges which says, when soldiers are marching across this bridge, please break step. So to make sure that um, um, you, you don't set up this resonance, this mechanical resonance on the bridge, and the bridge actually collapsing. So that's the Broughton Suspension Bridge. So one of the, the other bridges, now, and a bit more information here, in France, the Anjou Bridge um, was also a suspension bridge. Um, so this is the French, uh, this is actually the French uh, equivalent of the Broughton Bridge, was a suspension bridge over the main river in Auger, uh, France. It was designed uh, back in 1836 and 1839. The bridge collapsed in 1850 while a battalion of French soldiers was marching across it and it killed 200 of them. So the the Broughton Bridge, there were a lot of uh, injuries but there were no deaths from that particular uh, issue. But uh, So this is the Anjou Bridge and uh, surprisingly enough there were similar signs in French uh, put on the suspension bridges around um, around um, uh, uh, France. Now, probably the one that the 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 most I, I suppose um, <laughs> the most uh, photographed and also vi um, filmed uh, bridge collapses was the Tacoma Bridge, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington in. Um, uh, in America, um, and in 19, this was built in the 1940s. Uh, this is the suspension bridge. We're talking about a pretty decent bridge here, um, and uh, it was opened in 1940. Um, and you can <laughs> the 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 wind was around about 39 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. Uh, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't. Uh, it was a significant wind, but not uh, not of, uh, of 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 a great uh, a great speed, and it set up this resonance, this mechanical resonance on the bridge, um, and you can see there's a there's a vehicle there. Uh, no one was killed in this. Apparently, apparently the only thing that was killed was a dog, uh, that was, happened to be on the bridge at the time it collapsed. Uh, but it gets to a point where um, the physical structure of the bridge uh, just collapses and it, it falls into the river. Uh, you can see here the deck of the bridge. Uh, and, and because it was the, 19, uh, the 1950s, uh, of course, all of this was, um, all of this was, uh, was filmed. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, yeah, it's a um, it, it, very interesting, uh, very, very interesting um, 
um, resonances. We're talking about resonance here. So the wind set up a mechanical resonance of the bridge uh, and provided the energy uh, to uh, to actually set up this 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 wave on, on the bridge, and it got progressively more and more to the point where the actual bridge um, the actual bridge collapses. So um, it, very uh, very interesting um, and some great um, some really great uh, examples where uh, that uh, that. Um, that resonance, that mechanical resonance, is actually set up uh, through natural forces. So, uh, so um, let, now that moves to a very interesting, um, very interesting person uh, back in the the eighteen uh, hundreds, early eighteen hundreds, late seventeen hundreds, early eighteen hundreds. German physicist called Ernst Schladni, um, German physicist and musician. Uh, now, he's mostly known uh, for his Chladni plates. Now, these are plates that he, he, uh, he set up. Um, and, of course, uh, he, here, the picture that you see here on the screen shows him bowing. So this is a, a violin or a, or a viola bow um, uh, or a cello bow um, actually being drawn down the edge of this plate and he's got uh, some sort of uh, particles on the plate. And you find that um, because of the, the shape of the plate, the size of the plate, the frequency that the bow is, is inducing into the plate. So the bow being drawn down the edge of the plate is the thing that's providing the energy at a particular frequency. And what you find is um, the, uh, there are patterns set up on the plate. So, we now move, I thought, hmm, this is pretty interesting. So, I thought, we can do this, so a bit of a quick search on the, uh, on the internet, uh, has set up a, and we'll go to this camera, a mechanical Schladni plate. So, what we've got here is... And lots of salt that's just dropped out of the uh, out of the speaker. Um, <laughs> that's a bit of a dead giveaway, isn't it? What we've got is a um, uh, it's a bass speaker, uh, a bass to mid range speaker. So we we're not talking about very high frequencies here, but we're talking about a decent uh, decent speaker with a decent cone in it. Um, you can see uh, if we look inside here, there is a little uh, bottle top here, a suitable little bottle top that is epoxy resined to the um, to the cone. Uh, there's a little platform here uh, which provides a, a, a bush if you like that uh, this there's a screw into this little lid goes up through this bush and then into a, a, a metal plate here made of aluminium. Uh, so what, what this basically does is convert all of the energy coming from the speaker to a vertical movement. So anything that's coming up into this particular plate is, a, a, is an up and down vertical movement. Um, and there's a reason for that, because what you want to do with the, uh, the plate is make sure that all the energy is coming through the center of this plate um, and uh, that you do that through this little bush. So what I've got is a 150 watt speak, uh, 150 watt amplifier driving this, with a. Oh, that was a bit of a, a bit of a nasty little thing, eh? But you can see an uh, uh, audio oscillator, uh, and it is yes, it is a Dick Smith Electronics audio oscillator that has a um, a frequency counter on it, <laughs> and it's set to uh, sinusoidal waves, very low, the lowest setting. And this just tells me what frequency uh, we've got on the um, on the particular that we're dialing in. And I'll just um, you can see you might be able to see. Oh, hang on, I'll I'll give you some visual. Uh, and so we can wind the uh, wind the frequency up, and and at different frequencies we get 
some very interesting resonances and I'll just put some more salt on here we've got a little um, a little platform a little <laughs> tray here to catch all the salt because all the salt a lot of the salt um, ends up being um, thrown off the plate because the uh, the plates uh, the plates vibrating and vibrating all the little particles now they're just all vibrating at about the same frequency not organizing themselves at all now we're up to about a hundred Hertz a bit further up oh something uh, something appears to be happening here if we head back down a bit lower frequency ah oh, yes something is certainly happening and at about 148 Hertz guess what happens now that is that's at 150 Hertz and we've got an interesting pattern now if I keep going uh, I'll back that off keep going up we find at about 183 Hertz we've got a circle and if I keep going keep going up we've now got two lines I keep adding material because it's all falling off and then we keep going up and a little bit further up we find that there we go we keep going up oh okay we've now got a circle are starting to have obviously more energy oh we've gone past it let's come back in frequency a little bit feel like I'm salting the, uh, the meat appearing okay we keep going up in frequency we've got the corners so there's very little energy in here there's a bit of a concentration here in a wave front now what's going on here is is the characteristics of the size of this plate the frequency that it's, 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 it's being excited with through here sets up wave fronts across this plate and because of the size and the frequency and the edge it's obviously going to the edge, coming back, being reflected back and then interfering at these points so there is a, a bit of a, an, an anti node here and here and a bit of a node somewhere else so that's what's being set up on this on these plates. If we keep going, we find we've got a definite node anti node here. resonance of the system that I've got here <laughs> so I'll, I'll just do it with a fine tuner 
Uh, we've got an interesting pattern here. And there's a very interesting little node here. The really fine dust from the, from the salt is, is just here. Keep going up. activity here and here. Keep going up and then all of a sudden we get to a, a real pattern of activity and we get at about 9.08 you've got the same patterns here but you've got this cross in the middle. Just let me adjust. Okay. Now we've gone to the end of the range, so I have to go. I have to go. I have to go back through it again. It's an interesting one, quite unsymmetrical. <laughs> Keep going. Now there's a fascinating one coming up. Absolutely fascinating. You've got and I'll, I'll zoom up to um, we've got one here that's um, this is getting this is getting to about um. the limit of this speaker but it's just changed from one direction to the other and it's a slightly different pattern once we once we go past about this point um, the speaker can't can't actually oscillate it at the frequencies that it's being pumped into uh, because it is a base a base to medium speaker um, but you can see Yeah, we go, we go up, and it, it, it just.
and we can square it up. And the fascinating thing here is there is the very fine dust from the salt. There are little nodes right in the middle of all of this. I can get it to dance. Anyway, that's a... <laughs> That's a, a Chladney plate <laughs> with a with an awful lot of noise, um, and it's it's the um, it's the uh, the whole thing about it is it's demonstrating what I'm trying to demonstrate here is um, there is a resonant system being set up here. I'm providing additional energy. And at particular resonant points, you get real um, increase in amplitude and also those patterns that appear on the plate. Um, and Chladni himself was using a bow to provide that energy. But of course, these days we can, we can do it slightly, uh, slightly uh, better from the point of view of um, uh, um, providing a, a, an electronic way of uh, providing the energy. And, and being able to control the frequency so uh, so uh, and and um, the so the um, uh, the the videos that we've got for uh, our RF viewers after this there's a whole series of videos around uh, Chladni plates and also um, cymatics which is um, it's it's Greek for what, what they call modal vibrational phenomena which is not only particles, but it's liquids and all sorts of stuff. And cymatics uh, is used by quite a number of um, uh, both uh, uh, medical physicists um, and also uh, musicians <laughs> to uh, provide a, a whole bucket load of different sorts of effects and, uh, and uh, phenomena. Uh, but it's all to do with resonance of the system. In this plate, in this case, the system is a, a, an aluminium plate of uh, um, I, I don't know, uh, 10 or 15 centimetres in, uh, in uh, square uh, and we're providing the energy into it through the centre uh, through, a, uh, through a speaker. So uh, it, it just demonstrates um, resonant systems and I thought it was a, a great little way of uh, demonstrating resonant systems and I'll, I'll take it out into the club rooms and we can play with it out there So uh, and deafen everybody out there because I... Uh... <laughs> Um, you, you need to uh, you need to pump a fair bit of power into it. That's a 150 watt amplifier that I'm probably using at about I don't know 20 or 30 watts. Um, so uh, the, you do need to put a fair bit of energy into it to uh, to get it to start to do things. So uh, so anyway, that's the first bit of our, um, our our talk on on resonance. What I'm going to do next week is just explore um, the RF meaning of resonance and it, it's a really special condition in uh, in radio frequency that really really works um, if we didn't have that sort of uh, that resonance then uh, we certainly um, we certainly wouldn't have uh, some of the equipment and the electronics that we have now um, to get uh, get the frequencies that we uh, we actually need so um, so what I uh, the next step segment is um, uh, the Low Key Magazine. Now, I, I featured and reviewed these a few times in past programs. The Low Key Magazine is the journal of the VK uh, QRP Club, and uh, it's uh, it's. Oh, we need to uh, zoom out a bit there. Um, it's a great little magazine. Comes out every two months. Um, the VK QRP Club. Um, for the princely sum of $15 a year, uh, you get six of these. Um, you get a whole lot of other, other things available to you as well. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's an experimenters club. Um, you get lots and lots of articles from Peter Parker, VK3YE. Um, uh, you get... Uh, um, th there is uh, some articles in here this, uh, this time about um, Kias about uh, uh, um, um, uh, bugs, um, uh, there is a little bit around um, more lockdown, <laughs> low tone lockdown, uh, because the, uh, the Terry VK2KTJ, uh, who's the editor, uh, obviously is in New South Wales, um, 
Bit of a uh, bit of an article by Trevor Quick, uh, who's president of the VKQRP Club, VK5ATQ, um, and uh, he talks about uh, all sorts of things. Uh, the Clipsal Key, uh, some interesting readings, some CW practice, the Fist Down Under event, uh, website and Facebook update from Terry Dawson uh, again. Uh, Don Callow, VK5AIL, uh, with the uh, club news um, and the, uh, the the various 10, uh, 20, 30 year club uh, members and past, uh, past U, uh, QRP. Uh, the QRP hours 40, uh, 40 uh, metre contest in October. Um, and uh, it's the 17th of October, so it's this Sunday uh, is uh, CW and Digital and also SSB um, uh, on two different time uh, time places. Um, the recommended frequencies are in here, um, so I might uh, I might shoot that off to the disc, uh, Discord uh, session just to let people know for uh, our club members. Um, Club Awards. Uh, now they uh, they sponsor the um, the ten day QSO award, but also the milliwatts per kilometer award. Given they're a QRP club, um, there is a milliwatts per kilometer award, and uh, the lower the milliwatts and the more kilometers, uh, the higher the award. Um, Peter Parker, as I mentioned, uh, a hot way to estimate QRP power um, using a uh, quarter watt resistor. Uh, and uh, the uh, the uh, the um, the heat <laughs> uh, as a dummy load. Uh, Oceania contest, a, a QRP CW ops first time by Mike Charteris, uh, VK4QS uh, article. Uh, 2021 RD contest CW QRP by Phil Pavey, VK3 uh, VB, and it shows his uh, antennas, 80 and 160 meter antennas. Um, uh, QRP success game. Uh, by Peter Parker, uh, VK3YE, which is uh, absolutely fascinating. Three or more watts output, go three steps forward. Crystal control, go three steps back. Experienced operator, go three steps forward. <laughs> it's a, a wonderful, uh, very humorous little article. Um, um, and uh, bits that count in QRP, which is uh, Earths and, and Aerials by Doc Westcombe, uh, VK5Bug, uh, BUG. Uh, and uh, so a whole lot of pictures of his uh, antennas, his uh, 160 metre big bore helical, um, and uh, Kiwi SWR, uh, SDR, sorry, software defined radio, a quick review, uh, and using the, S, uh, the Kiwi SDR, uh, putting it together. Um, uh, member classifieds, uh, of course, we've got Chris uh, VK. Uh, one CT who always puts the uh, the crossword the QRP VK QRP crossword in uh, in uh, for uh, everybody um, application for membership the low key calendar the club nets and frequencies uh, and member email addresses and then on the back uh, uh, very very nice uh, homebrew station of uh, of uh, Chris Grierson who is GM four LYN uh, YLN sorry I'm dyslexic there. Comprises a 28 meg transceiver and a number of transverters uh, to enable us to use all bands, all home uh, home brew. So, uh, and the detail inside one of the uh, the transceivers. So, anyway, that's a uh, that's a quick review of the September 2021 uh, Low Key magazine, which is the journal of the VK QRP Club. So, uh, it's uh, d definitely worth a look. And for fifteen dollars, uh, fifteen dollars a uh, a year. Uh, you get yourself uh, six of these per year, and then uh, access to a whole lot of other things with the uh, the VK QRP club. There are many, many uh, Tasmanian members uh, who uh, who are there now. Uh, calling Richard, uh, Richard VK Seven ZBX. If you're still in the club rooms, can you please make your way to the studio? Uh, calling Richard, calling Richard, calling Mr. Richard. Um, I need a little sign. ZBX studio, please. <laughs> Uh, Mr. ZBX, um, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? They're probably not listening out there, you know. Uh, typical. Um, uh, now, what I was going to show you is... Oh, we don't need that one. That doesn't show a thing. So, let's go back to our close-up cam and go a little closer... A update on 
our 3.4 gig experiments with the SG Labs transverters. You'll notice here, excuse me, I can blow my nose. Um, no, I don't have COVID. Um, <laughs> um, we had, uh, I mentioned last week that we had um, uh, the feeds arrive from, uh, from the um, uh, Spook Tech. <laughs> Spook Tech uh, in uh, Victoria, who's which is run by Heath VK3 uh, TWO. Um, and if you're listening, Richard, please uh, please make your way into the uh, the studio. Um, now, hang on, I'll just have a look. I will just have a look. I should be monitoring the live stream. <laughs> and Murray uh, commented, how did I ever think resonance was when capacitive reactants equaled inductive reactants? <laughs> that's next week, Murray. That's, that's definitely next week. That is definitely, definitely next week. It's when everything becomes resistive. So there you go. However, okay, um, getting back to uh, 3.4 gigs, um, we had uh, the, the feeds arrive uh, for the... Um, uh, the 3.4 gig uh, antennas. This is the uh, the little technical sheet that comes with it. The feeds are, uh, are this little area here, obviously. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, um, you can see the installation sketch. This is the uh, the barbecue grill or the grid pack uh, reflector. And then this feed mounts into the middle of it. There are two screws that hold it on. Um, if the specifications, uh, 3.3 to 3.8 gigs, bandwidth is 500 meg, uh, with a large grid pack, uh, it's 27 dBi, um, and the beam width is uh, about 9.5 degrees in the E elevation and uh, 6.5 in the horizontal elevation. Front to back is pretty good, which is what you'd expect with a, a grid pack, uh, and uh, 50 50 ohms can take 100 watts, which is fantastic. So, what uh, Steve VK700, uh, this is his grid pack here, um, and in fact, that's his grid pack being used uh, there on the uh, on the chair, pointed at the uh, organ pipes of Mount Wellington. Uh, this was done with Richard VK7ZBX, and if, if you're listening, Richard, uh, can can you make your way into the uh, into the studio with your uh, with your phone? Um, <laughs> so, um, um, hang on. I'll just uh, I'll just uh, do a uh, calling, Mr. Richard. Richard VK Seven ZBX, make your way into the studio. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so what we did was an A B test on these antennas. The very first one we tried was the uh, the smaller Ostar dish. So this is your standard Ostar dish with without the Ostar feed. Uh, but with the 3.4 gig feed in there, uh, and what uh, what we actually got uh, in there was um, we got uh, FM quietening uh, well and truly uh, with uh, signal reports of no more than about S3. There was significant QSB uh, between myself and Richard off the mountain, and it was a bit windy on the mountain, so uh, there there was significant QSB. I then moved to uh, the larger grid pack, and we were getting. Uh, five nine plus, absolutely uh, full quietening, uh, peaking on on about five nine or above signals, uh, and uh, uh, it was a significant improvement uh, to the smaller grid pack. I then moved back to the the smaller the smaller grid pack. Oh no, hang on, that's harps. Um, uh, the smaller grid pack, uh, just to confirm that that was the results and. Uh, uh, it was certainly uh, similar results. So, uh, so that was the uh, the arrangement at uh, at South Hobart, um, and you can see um, the the transverter, the SG Labs transverter, is that box on the back. It is literally straight at the back of the antenna, so there is absolutely no loss. Be a very very small loss through the connector, um, but that's uh, that's as good as it gets. That's three watts uh, into uh, one of these uh, grid packs. This one I would suggest is 27 dBi, as uh, the specifications say. 
This one uh, significantly less. Um, the the grid pack area is uh, quite a bit uh, quite a bit smaller. Now just let me go and get Richard because I'll show you the other end of the link. Okay, so I've got uh, Richard making his way into La Studio. That's French, just close yeah. the door. La Studio. Have you got your phone? Yes. And a picture of your um, yeah. your 3.4 gig setup last uh, uh, I'll do lasted it. a while? I'll do it, I think. Cool. My moment. Caller. Yeah, <laughs> just hold that thought. Um, and welcome, Richard, Rico7ZBX. Good day, good day. <laughs> Richard's been uh, slaving away out there, you, uh, making the new uh, the new desk for the club station, which is looking very schmick. I've stopped drilling holes to stop making noise. Oh, oh that's right. Did I? That's okay. I did take photos. I'm you sure sent them to me. That doesn't mean anything. Just <laughs> oh, hang on, this does. <laughs> so that's all automatically. Oh, that'll be an Android there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do that as you will. <laughs> oh shit, what do I do? No, yeah. Okay. Okay, now go back over here uh -huh. and zoom in a bit more. So that's a bit of a oh. I recognise that white box in the yeah. uh, in the uh, in the uh, Yeah, the, there's, the a few, garage, there's a few so. things there. So that's the four metre long Yagi for twenty three centimetres up there. Cool. Um the grid pack, and that's no, that's no, the panel. that's the panel. That's the six hundred. That's six hundred square, supposedly twenty five dB okay. ish. Okay. Now uh, the piece of um, um, like it, uh, not LMR. It's like not LDF. It's that uh, FSJ, the flexible. Oh, yes, sort yes. Of stuff. yes, yes. Yes, uh, yes. About a meter of that to a little tail that goes into the transverter, which is on the desk. Pardon me. Nice. And driving the transverter with the ninety seven hundred. With the eight one seven. Eight one seven. Okay. Okay. Um, because it's much easier to because it's got a consistent output. You can basically tweak the output till you get two green LEDs on the transverter. Cool, cool. Love it, love it, love it. Is that um, the only picture? Uh, there's one more to one side. One more. Yes, oh, that's, that's the we, table. There we go. So cool. that's um, so it's the A17. A17, yep. And the transverter's up yeah, in that yeah. sort of uh, fairly light pole, yeah. And 9700, which ah, was for yeah. the 23 centimeter net. Cool. Power supply laying on the ground over on the other side. Cool. So that that's your twenty three centimeter setup as well. Is yes. It? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the, the 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 good thing and the bad thing about my setup is that I've got a really sort of glorious shack, which is nice and high and got a good lookout and blah blah blah. Mm. But unfortunately, the feed line runs are a little bit long, so um, I just lose too much. So I I have really good success by just basically mm. bringing the ninety seven hundred down, putting it on that table, running the four meters of feed line or six meters of feed line up to that. Yep. Um, I can hear everybody and everybody can hear me, so it's sort of it works a treat. So. Well, you, you're 30 over 9 for me. You're 30 to 40 over 9 for I've me. I've just put a new feed in the 6 metre long yard too. And I did some, some very brief tests with Martin, Vico 7 gn okay. and he said it was pretty outstanding, the difference. Now, Martin Martin is, I hate to say this, is above Rex in signal level. Oh, OK. Yeah. Like, he, he is... Bending the needle, whereas Rex is just. We are in a pretty enviable spot. You've just sort of below the mountain, and all the all the RF just sort of hits it, and then sort of just falls off and drops hits, on your antenna. Hits like me, that's, really? That's pretty good. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah um, um, distance I think is my it's uh, the advantage. So, uh, well, yes. I'm relatively happy that I can I can hear and work um, Gary, who's probably the furthest well, station surely. south, and Snow. probably the furthest one yep. north. So, and actually, I don't know what Gary uses. Does he use one of our Yogis? I'm um, not sure. I think he's got a bit of a mixture. Right. Okay. Um, but he, I think he's got a, a setup in his shack and one in the house or something. I'm not sure because yeah. he does vary. Sometimes Correct. he's really, really strong Correct. and sometimes he's... His, his shed so um, in winter is a challenge. I have I have many, heard him say that, that it's very cold. That it's, he doesn't like to keep stop moving or he might uh, freeze uh, up. So. Correct, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. If he doesn't have a good supply of coffee out there, it's um, somewhat uh, concerning. But, um, but no, look, I think our results were pretty promising on 3.4, so... Definitely. Um, now, uh, the, the big news is, uh, at the Open Day, which is happening on Saturday, as I mentioned earlier, don't forget. we will have uh, some things for purchasing, which uh, will be to do with 23 centimetres. We will. We finally... 
mm -hmm. after a long adieu, um, and slack this on probably behalf of myself, That's right. um, got the 10 of the 23 centimetre um, Yagi kits that will be available. Lovely. I uh, just need to print out basically a set of instructions, and I've taken a few photos um, of nothing to do with goats or, <laughs> or productions or, productions or <laughs> network cables. Ah, ah um, yes. when you prepared earlier. So that's just basically a few pictures of, oh, the, cool. of okay. the Yagi that I'm just going to include yep. for details. So, that, However, um, the only difference is these will have 19 elements instead of the other ones were 18. That's means to squeeze right. an extra element on. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so if anyone wants a 23 centimetre yagi, bring um, your. Come along, bring your red, wallet. Readies along. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some assembly required. Yes, definitely some assembly required. <laughs> because I'm not cutting and filing all the elements ever again. I've done my bit of that. Yeah, I don't think any of us are actually. <laughs> After doing it, I built the, the two four metre long ones with 47 elements from myself and Murray, and then I built that 69 element thing. I don't know how you did it. A lot of um, Jamisons, I suspect. Oh, no, no, Jamisons is no good because <laughs> you file them too short and then you go, oh, I need to make it for, for element number 75. It yeah. doesn't exist. <laughs> That's you know, for the file, 10 metre file, long file, yard. And you put it in, you go, oh, damn it. Oh, that can be. Yeah. That could be the next yeah. one. So oh, you can get away no. with it for a while, but then you find you have a great stash of all the short ones. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be for the 3.4 gig yagi. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny things have happened, but um, uh, that's well, actually good. Um, Rex actually made a 10 gig yagi, so there you go. Of course he did. <laughs> just because, I think it was that mountain thing, just because you're good. I think that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right, um, thank you very much, Rex. Right. That no is worries. fantastic, and we'll keep people up to date with our uh, 3.4 gig experiments. Uh, we certainly had a difference between the, the the big grid pack and the little grid pack. Mm. That's that was just phenomenal. Yeah, well, I swapped. Up. Did I swap between? Because I've got a Garth panel as well. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's what we've always that used. Be something we do this weekend. Yeah. Well, that's, all the tests I ever did with with Peter mm. um, were just with that Garth panel. And yep. you know, as it turns out now, my my Garth panel I think was just a bit deaf. Yeah. Okay. And but, um, ditto. So, you know, but now these things are just really... However, I now have the transverter that I can peak that panel up with, mm. which um, that's actually... Um, I can now at least try to mm. make it less deaf. So... Uh, well, look, I always thought my, my 9 centimetre system worked reasonably well based on its history, you know, yeah. you know? Yeah. because Hayden and I had a few contacts uh, before he moved... Yeah. Um, I think it was in Ranelagh, well, I'm in yeah, Tree, okay. and we worked on 3.4 gigs. And like you've just got Mount Wellington the in the middle of you, so, you basically know, the Mount Wellington range um, in the middle of you. <laughs> like it certainly wasn't sort of five or nine armchair copy, but yeah. it was, it was, you know, it was, it was enough to exchange numbers, so that was pretty good. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, maybe, look, I, I don't know, obviously those panels are quite old, maybe it didn't survive a trip, sort of, you know, in the mountain, up the mountain perhaps, or... Well, that cavity, I, I, I really think the cavity filter is one of the, I suppose, the, not not the weaknesses of the system, but one of the challenges of the system. Yeah. Because if you don't have equipment, you actually, the, the, where you can peak that. Yeah, and it's really quite sharp. It's not, you know. Correct. Oh, yeah, I'll tweak it a bit here. Oh, that's a bit better. It's like, whoop. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, it's oh, all yeah. gone. <laughs> so that's why uh, I, now that I've got a signal source that I know is on frequency and all of that sort of stuff, which you can then attenuate down mm -hmm. and, then, and just keep peaking up and keep attenuating, keep peaking, keep attenuating and all of this sort of stuff, you just, I can guarantee that I've, you know, I've got that right. Um, and then try it again, um, well and truly, because they're, they're, if, that, if that actually works and we can get a decent performance system, then somebody, hey, somebody can have that. That system. That's and, right. And they, and, and another well, that one was, on three point. That was my um. That was my sort of sentiment because, even though that system's got the it's got the thirty watt amp. Yeah. Which would be like a f fairly formidable sort of system. Mm. So but I think we need to try and keep our eyes out in, in collectively for some of those um. The those stealth microwave thirty four thirty sevens or whatever. They are, okay. The, okay. The WiMAX things. I think one I got. Well, I think me and Peter and maybe even Hayden got them all together. We got them out of Israel. I okay. Think. Okay. And you didn't have to send your life away with the, oh, no, the not weapons now, of mass destruction. Now, but, um, yeah. <laughs> but they're really high gain. They're like 50 dB gain. So they, you have 30 watts out for one milliwatt in. Ooh. 
Okay. So, Some attenuation there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 30, I think we worked out with the SG now because they give three watts out. Yeah. I think we worked out 34.8 dB of yeah, okay. Okay. attenuation. So, okay. Um, <laughs> But, um, but look, I think there's a few of those amps around still, probably, even in people's um, put jaws that they're not using. Okay. Uh, and I think there's probably a few of the Toshiba okay. ones around too. There's a 50 watt version of those. I can't remember the number off the top of my head. 2683 or something. Okay. There's okay. an A and a B model, and apparently the A model does 50 watts. And the B model only does 20, but apparently um, DB6NT worked out a way of changing. The drive and he okay. was able to get 65 watts out of them. Right. So not actually playing with the bias on the transistor or no, anything no, no. sort of dodgy. It's it's um actually um, driving it. Aren't yeah. It? So. Mm, okay. And there's an article on the net for that, but okay. It's pretty intense, but it's sort of doable. But um, okay. And there's I think one of the guys in the moment. I think uh, is it Charlie VK3 NX. I think he's got two of those modified amps. Okay. Combined together with a rat race combiner that mm. gives him 100 watts on. It's 3.4. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We might get back to Gibbs Tech at some point. So, <laughs> now, <laughs> stick around. Um, stop Press. Stop Press. The um, You may have heard on the uh, national broadcast, national WA broadcast, that uh, there is going to be a half day virtual conference. Oh, yes. Um, at the WIA AGM weekend, and that half day uh, virtual conference is being organised by REAST. Um, so, we have uh, many probably know um, we were going to be the destination for the 2020 uh, WIA AGM weekend uh, with a theme of Antarctic Gateway. And we had the program together, and everything happened, and then Perfect. COVID uh, happened as well. So it all uh, went uh, backwards very quickly. So um, what we have been able to do is uh, put together the, uh, the, the talk, what would have been the presentation section of that program uh, into a half day uh, hybrid, uh, no, half day virtual, it's not hybrid, it's all virtual. So it's all online, all Zoom session, um, with the theme of Antarctic Go Away. Yeah, so we're just super cool. confirming the program. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, watch this space. Uh, there'll be uh, information about that in the not too distant future once we've confirmed a few uh, speakers and a few other things just to make sure that they can still, they're still prepared to uh, to present for us. So uh, pretty exciting stuff. We'll sort of plan for that, I think. So. so um, don't know uh, when, uh, but it'll be uh, somewhere around May-ish, you know, um, that sort of era, that sort of place, uh, April, May. Uh, and we'll see, yeah, how it goes. So, so yeah. Good so, that's, uh, that's our um, presentation for tonight. Uh, what we've got, as I mentioned, is some videos for our RF viewers on the Ch Chladney, pl Chladney Plates. Uh, and also cymatics, um, and also uh, some. Uh, there's a Vitassium uh, video at the start of this, which is the surprising secret of synchronization, which is all about resonance. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So, um, so uh, we've got a bit of a theme going, and next week uh, onto RF resonance. So uh, that's uh, it's probably a bit more relevant to uh, to amateurs, but uh, anyway, we'll get there. Uh, so anyway, that's our uh, show for tonight. Thank you, Richard, for. Showing your uh, okay. three point four, and Thank you, Justin uh, for doing everything else. Also, we... all the uh, work that's going to uh, the club station. Uh, I think it's going to look super schmick, very schmick. So uh, anyway, have a fantastic, uh, have a fantastic week, uh, and please, 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 if you're at a loose end, or even if you aren't at a loose end, or need an excuse to get out of the house, uh, which is always. Tony good. will be making coffee, so that'll be worth a trip. Real coffee real from coffee. a real coffee machine by a real barista. Mm. Uh, also, uh, but, uh, snacks in bread uh, with onions on top or, or underneath. underneath. It Whatever. depends what you want. <laughs> uh, so uh, there'll be a choice of, uh, of condiments and bits and pieces. So, uh, 
So um, food, uh, amateur radio, many, many activities you can get yourself involved with. Who would want more? From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday the 16th up here on the, at the Queen's Domain. So look forward to seeing you up here. I will so, be here. Excellent. I will be too. Anyway, uh, 73, have a great week and we'll catch you next time around. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV experiment is not. 73. 73.